hi everyone um how are we doing today you are welcome back to my youtube channel um so i hope that you've been blessed by my um previous videos um this was supposed to originally be the first thing i'll be talking about um since my comeback but you know as god will have it you know he had a different message for you guys and i hope that you were blessed by my very last video you know um, a surrendered life um it's very important you know that we surrender it all you know for god and he'll continue to give us grace you know to walk this walk you know grace to um live life to the full. <laughs> I'm going to be talking about something that I feel is very important, you know, something for my single ladies and gentlemen, you know, um, and it's the pressures of being single. <laughs> There's this thing they say now, the pressure is getting worse. <laughs> and that's just the truth. The pressure is actually getting worse. I feel the older you get, the more the pressure, you know, becomes, you know, um, and now um this is not just pressure because you know you're single you're not dating and everything this is more pressure because you're getting older like in your 30s you know like i'm 36 close to 37 you know and i'm still single not dating not married you know and people are wondering what was going on i get asked different questions you know from family you know and the pressure is just there you know so the question now is how do we handle the pressure that comes with being single especially in your 30s be your early 30s or your late 30s you know how do we handle the pressure that comes because the pressure comes from different angles you know from family most especially um and when i say family aunties parents cousins you know and sometimes siblings <laughs> depending i'm the first child so my siblings are not pressurizing me anyways um pressure comes from social media you know what you see on online you know where people are just getting engaged and hook left right and center you're seeing couple goals out ah, couple goals you know couples doing things together vacationing you know like the pressure there's pressure that comes you know from the internet you know social media you know there's pressure that comes from friends depending on the kind of friends you have you know um there's also pressure that comes from society you know now the society we live in if you're in your 30s you know you're not married yet you know there's a problem they say they feel you have a problem they feel that you're being too choosy they feel that you're being too picky like there's always something tied to you you know a single person in their 30s you know that is not married you know what could the problem be so there's pressure that comes from different angles left right and center you know and the question now is how do you deal with this pressure how have i been able to deal with the pressure you know how have i been able to handle the pressure because sometimes it can get overwhelming especially the one from family so there are some people that i don't like to call some aunties that if i call them you know i'm just checking up on them and i want to like hang up almost immediately because i know that if we linger on we, and sometimes i can't even escape it even if i want the conversation to be quick it always comes up you know moji eh, you know close close choosing picking you so the interpretation of that is moji are you being choosy are you being selective won't choose on shako for ko on shako for kunya bi that means are you, you are doing shakara for the opposite sex that be you are doing shakara you are doing big girl that be that kind of thing you know so i hear that a lot you know that my word choose you don't be choose you like don't be selective but my word choose you eh my word choose you think that you know so and sometimes it can get overwhelming you know so i try to avoid and when they ask me these questions when I call them. I just tell them that, that look, auntie or mommy, um, could be my big mommy, could be anyone, you know. I'll be like, auntie, don't worry, it is well. God has done it, it is settled. He's coming, he's around soon. You know, I just try to 
I, I just told them that, you know, that's how I, I like it as well. God has done it. It is settled very soon, you know, very soon. You carry my child, you carry your your children, you know. Um, so it can be so overwhelming, you know, and sometimes cousins, you know, um, friends, my friends, not really. My friends don't even, in fact, my friends, you know, they pray with me, you know, and if there's someone in the radar, you know, they help me do background checks, you know, and all of that, you know, so they've got my back 100%. No pressure comes from my friends, you know. How about social media? I remember, <laughs> I remember there was one time, and that's why it's very important that we are careful with what we feed our eyes with, you know, if you can't handle some things, don't, like, just stay away, you know, um, so... I mean, I'm happy. I'm always happy, you know, for people, you know, that get engaged, you know, that and, and they put it up on social media, you know, seeing weddings and all that. Like, it's a thing of joy for me, you know, and I celebrate with them. But there was this particular one. I think I went to go and pass my boundary. And I don't know. I, I think I was just all up in my feelings that day. Um, she did like a vlog, you know, of her engagement, you know, and everything. And it was up on YouTube, you know, and I watched it, you know. And that's why I didn't know while I was on the chair watching, I just started to cry. You know, I started to cry. I'm like, God, why, when, you know, and that really happens to me where I see that, you know, and I start to ask God questions and I used, I start to wonder, God, when, you know, how soon, you know, and I, I start to feel pain, you know, watching someone else celebrating and that has never happened to me, you know, and I told my friends, you know, I called my friends almost immediately, was it the next day? I can't remember. And I told them about it and they told me that you to stop watching stuff like that, but I'm like, I watch it, you know, and most times what it does is it stirs up my faith, you know, like I still want their testimonies, you know, and I, I, I just, I, I get so excited, you know, and I begin to trust God that, ah, my own will come soon, that kind of thing, you know, and I celebrate and joy with those that are celebrating, but this particular day, I just started crying, you know, and it's one of those things, it happens sometimes where we get we feel down, you know, we, we feel sad, you know, because this particular thing isn't happening. This thing that I'm trusting God for for so long isn't happening, you know. And then the pressure that comes from society, you know, so you're 30 or you're in your 30s, you know, you're still single, you know, why you have a problem, you know. But I just want to tell someone here that you do not have a problem. There, there is absolutely nothing wrong with you. And yes, sometimes. It could be a spiritual thing that you have to deal with. Like, um, I don't know if um, if you, if Sister Fikayo's testimony, for instance, you know, there are certain things she had to do, you know, um, to deal with that particular issue because she was facing other spiritual things like um, the spiritual husband and everything. And that was like a hindrance, you know, to guys seeing her and everything. And she had to go for a deliverance process. You know, she had to like fight it out spiritually. But for some of you, that might not even be the case. In all honesty, it might not even be anything spiritual. You know, it might just not be the time. You know, and the Bible says that he makes all things beautiful in its time. God's timing is the best timing. There is absolutely no delay with God. You know, like his time is the right time. God's time is the right time. And I think the prayer for us singles is that we should just be aligned, you know, to his timing. We should be aligned to his will and we should trust that he will make it all work out for our good. The Bible says that his thoughts towards us, they are thoughts of good, not of evil, you know, to give us a future and hope to bring us to unexpected and some other versions. You know, the Bible, he is, the Bible even says that it is not man. It's not good for man to be alone. You know, this is in Genesis. This was a conversation God was having with the angels, you know, and everyone around him at the beginning of time in creation. He's the one that said it. And it is not good for man to be alone. So he knows. And the truth is not everyone will get married. You know, that's if you want to be a monk, you know, if you want to. Like, Paul wasn't married. Jesus didn't get married, you know. But I know that some of us desire marriage. And I desire marriage. Peter was married. You know, some of the apostles were married you know and i desire it and i know that at his time he will make it beautiful like the way it will happen i've heard testimonies of this and i'm like god only you could have done this this could have like and he will make it so beautiful so don't rush it don't force it don't ah because i'm that you i've not gotten married or i'm not even dating anyone you know, now go and enforce yourself into someone's life or just go and settle thou shalt not settle you cannot afford to settle or because you know ah, it's the next guy that just comes ah, ah, is the one you know you don't even know 
and he's not a born again christian or he's born again and he's lukewarm you know he has some character flaws so i'm not saying that you have to get find mr perfect because the truth is we are all work in progress you know god and the holy spirit is still having his perfect work in us but you see the red flags you see these things but because you are desperate to settle down and get married you now go and settle you are not you cannot afford to settle there's no point after waiting for this long you now go and just settle because you are 30 you're in your 30s you know and you, you, you don't want to be single anymore so you just settle for the next guy or the next lady that comes your way no no or how they say it no you know you can't afford to do that you know so while you wait so what are the things you, you should be doing you know while you're trusting god in this waiting process because that is what it is it's just a waiting process you know it's a process you know that we'll all go through some people end their process early you know some people have to wait longer you know and we are part of people that are waiting longer you know but he he, he will make you beautiful at his time trust me and i feel for me it's just his promises you know his word that's keeping me going he's the bible says that and none shall lack their mates that's somewhere in isaiah you know so just look for scriptures you know that you can hold on to you know and trust god that at his time perfect timing you know he'll make it beautiful he'll bring your prince charming or your princess charming your way <laughs> you know um so what, what are the things you can do while you wait pray seek god's face get to know god more just live your life my pastor will say my late pastor pastor no he will say enjoy your life you know she got married to in her 30s i think she was 35 when she met pastor taiwo Tukoya, and she was serving she met him at the place of service so what are the things you can do while you are trusting god for your life partner work on yourself build yourself develop yourself work on your spirituality you know get closer to god you know just work in pop in, pur in purpose <laughs> work in purpose you know um pursue him serve serve in your local assembly you know do the things that he has called you to do you don't have to wait till you enter marriage to you start some certain things pursue your career take yourself out study the bible pray 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 for your marriage pray for your husband pray for your children go out have a good time enjoy your life hang out with friends meet people network you know just enjoy yourself while you wait enjoy yourself while you wait build character develop yourself read read and read read books read spiritual books read just read develop like live basically <laughs> live live life you know if you can't afford to travel and do every other thing but just live life according to your means and enjoy yourself enjoy yourself enjoy fellowshipping with god enjoy being in a relationship with god right now as you are still waiting for him to bring the man that would represent him physically you know here on earth you know <laughs> enjoy your life enjoy yourself do not let pressure get you do not let the pressure get to you like i said i'm turning 37 next year and i'm living my best life in god be open-minded meet people you know have conversations with people build your friendships build your relationships you know but don't let that be your focus oh i want to marry you 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 hey i'm getting older i'm getting older oh i'm getting older i saw something on social media um this morning where there was one girl she said she's turning 30 next year you know and she was crying because she was still single you know and she put it up on social media i'm like no that is not the way you can cry true you can cry in your closet but after crying what do you do praise him thank him thank him because you know that he has done it and even if there's this song Pastor Tolu Tukoya um, Ijogun sang, you know, that I love so much, you know. It's, if you give me a reason, Lord, I will praise you. Without a reason, I will still praise you. If you give me a miracle, yes, I will praise you. And without a miracle, I will still praise you. I want to add my own said them skinny if you give me a husband i will still praise you and without a husband i will still praise you if you give me a wife i will still praise you now this is for the men and without a wife 
Yes, I'll still praise you. Cause you are God alone. You are God. You reign in, in majesty. Lord, you reign. You're the king of authority. Authority. You are God alone. You are God alone. So if he gives you a partner, even if he doesn't give you a partner, will you still praise him? Will you still worship him? Will you still fellowship with him? Will you still serve him? Or is your service to him conditional? That's the question I want you to ask yourself. Are you serving God because of what you want from him? Are you serving him because of what you want out from the relationship? Or even if he doesn't do anything, even if you don't meet your partner before the year ends, because some of us have given God a deadline that, ah, like me now, I said, ah, but in the beginning of the year, I said by November 2022, I'm getting married. But alas, <laughs> November is next year and there's no man in sight. So yeah. Um, so like me, did you give God a deadline? I didn't give him a deadline. You know, it was just something I said. Ah, November 25th is a special day for me. You know? And I don't know. I still trust God. It might not be marriage now on November 25th, but I trust that November is a significant month for me this year. Anyways, so some of us have given God deadline that, ah, by so, 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 in 2022, I will get married. But alas, you're not married. And because of that, you're going to throw it all away. God, you disappointed me. You have disapp you have failed me. I'm not serving you again. No. We cannot give God a deadline. We cannot put him under durex. We cannot tell him that if you do this for me, then I accept. It's a sacrifice. Like Anna, she was trusting God for a child. And she told him that, God, if you give me this child, you know, when she was at, Mount, when she was at um, Shiloh praying, you know, and the prophet, you know, saw her. She was like, God, if you give me this child, I'll give him back to you. Now, that's a prayer of sacrifice because you're giving it back to God. Or is it that God will give you the husband and that's the end of the relationship, the fellowship, the agreement, everything, the service, because it was conditional, you know, because you're just serving him because of what you want to get from him. Let's let, 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 let that not, let Jesus, English is hard. That shouldn't be, you know, our wife. We should love him unconditionally. We should serve him unconditionally. Even if, even if, even if not, you know, even if he does it, even if he doesn't do it, shouldn't be conditional. You know, and I just pray that God will help us. You'll testify. You'll testify. We'll celebrate with you. We'll dance with you, you know. But remember this. Look for scriptures that you can use to encourage yourself while you're waiting. Pray for your family. Pray for your husband. You know, and just thank God. Because it is settled, he has done it. It is finished, you know. And I pray that you testify in Jesus' name. Don't put pressure on yourself. Don't let the world pressure you. Don't let society pressure you. Don't let your family pressure you. Don't let social media pressure you. If what you're seeing on social media is overwhelming, go off, take time off, you know, and just bask in the goodness of God. Thank him, praise him, love upon him, work the work, you know, live and fulfill purpose. Stay, position yourself, you know, stay in alignment with his will and hold on to his word for he makes all things beautiful in its time. God's time is indeed and truly the best time. Thank you so much for your time. I didn't know it was going to be this long, but I believe that you are blessed watching this. And don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like, share, you know, and just invite people to my channel. God bless you and have an amazing day. Mwah.